for most people, Africa is still the unknown continent, an immense landmass, the home of many peoples of many civilizations. The north of the continent is rich in Arab culture, customs, architecture, traditions, and with the people of a race who laid the foundations for Western civilization. Life in Rabat, capital city of Morocco, is distinctively a blend of ancient and modern, both forming a fascinating partnership which cannot fail to impress even 20th century explorers. Today, Africa need no longer remain the unknown continent. Jet travel is the key. For almost everywhere in the world, it's only a matter of hours before the traveler is ferried across the invisible jet bridge from the normality of home to the unexpected wonders of this not so distant land. And the welcome waiting, let an ancient Arab saying speak for itself. Traveler, if you visit us, you shall be master of the house and we shall be your guests. They still mean it. Incidentally, don't let the French names fool you. We're still in Rabat, but the French influence is still strong here. Most Moroccans are bilingual. But the hospitality of mint tea is straight out of the Arabian Nights. Aromatic, refreshing, an invitation for one's taste buds to get up and go. That's traditional mint tea, a very good tradition. Like most other customs in present-day Morocco, though rooted in ancient times, they're very much an integral part of today's life. Example, the proud horsemanship and skill of the tribesmen who perform this ritual charge. The location is Marrakech. It's an exciting spectacle. But for the riders, it's a demonstration of their ability as warriors. As would be expected, camels figure importantly in the lives of villagers and small tradespeople. That the early morning camel market in Marrakesh should also be a popular tourist attraction is not surprising. No, it's not difficult to look in on the past in this country. It's everywhere in the present. Like to buy a new carpet? This is the place, from raw wool to the finished article, and no middleman to worry about. No gimmicks, no synthetics, just good carpets like they've always made. But just step around the corner, and there's modern Morocco. Luxury hotels with all the trappings of 20th century cossity. Explorers don't have to rough it these days. But let's move on. Travel north through this country, where every mile exposes more contrast between yesterday and today where signposts point the way to places whose names conjure up the romance of the past. Fez, most ancient of the imperial cities, founded near the end of the 8th century, and even today, the intellectual capital of the kingdom. A place equally famous, however, for its superb leather goods. Here again, the ancient, proven ways are still considered the best. The quality of the leatherware made here endorses the soundness of the old methods. We'll travel on again to Tangier, where the Atlantic meets the Mediterranean, the place chosen by King Hassan II as his summer capital. It's bright and vibrant, a place which boasts excellent hotels and is rapidly becoming one of North Africa's leading resorts. The quaint, narrow back streets and bazaars make it a tourist paradise. The flavor of its internationalism has remained, even though it returned to Moroccan sovereignty in 1957. If you want something, this is the place to get it. Tangier is West and East combined in an exciting marriage. When the sun sets, Tangier starts to live all over again. Nightlife, without doubt, is certainly swinging. Casablanca, a name which breathes romance and intrigue. Both are still here if one wants them, but basically it's just a beautiful place, 
Another example of how Muslim life has united with the French influence to produce the best of both worlds. Casablanca ranks as the economic capital of the kingdom, but it's much more than that. It's bustling and exciting, strange and familiar, expanding at a tremendous rate. A seaside city which works as hard as it plays. Its expansion has included some of the finest hotels to be found anywhere. Yes, Casablanca is quite a place. A place from which to look out across the Atlantic rollers and see the sun set as an everyday spectacular. Jet bridge doesn't end here. The traveler's course is charted to other faraway places, which swiftly become not so far away. The jetliner wings its way east. To where flamingos fly. From the exotic Arab north, southeast across the African continent. It takes only a few short hours. And the prize is to be in big game country, Kenya. These days, distance is no hardship, flying, no adventure. The adventure starts when you land at Nairobi. A new place, new people, new things to see and do. The fulfillment of an explorer's ambition. To have come from the modern cities of another country to an equally new looking metropolis may make it seem all too familiar. Don't let it. Tall buildings with their shiny glass and colorful facades don't make a country. Just a few miles away is one of the best game parks in the world. The pleasure is that the good life is also never far away. There's pleasure also in knowing that the wood carvings are genuine, native art and skill at its best. No mass production here. This is the Intercontinental Hotel. It makes a luxury base camp. It ought to. It's one of Nairobi's finest hotels with everything to make even the most seasoned traveler feel at home. It's possible to stay here and still enjoy the excitement of the big outdoors with its teeming wildlife. And return each night to excellent food and a comfortable bed. And that's having your cake and eating it. As the signs show, there's no lack of advice on what to do and where to do it. There are plenty of experts around to ensure that nobody leaves for home without seeing what they came to see. Mark you, it wouldn't do to go on safari in city slicker clothes. Dressing the part of the white hunter is all part of the game. A camera is about the only special equipment anybody needs. And there's a big choice of them at the local shops. It's well worth buying a good one. Who'd want to miss pictures like these? It's quite incredible when one realizes that all this wildlife is only five miles from the center of Nairobi. The only discomfort tourists may suffer is an occasional bump as their safari wagon takes them to the animals. Lion is a must, of course. But Kenya's equatorial coast can be just as much a magnet as big game. This is Mombasa, largest port of East Africa, and consequently one of the most cosmopolitan of the continent. One of Mombasa's most important historical monuments is Fort Jesus. It was built by the Portuguese to protect them from the Turks. Present-day Mombasa, however, welcomes foreigners and knows how to look after them. With a cool drink, a hot sun, and the warm ocean only a few yards away, this could be paradise.
Big game hunting can take on a fishy form in this part of the world. The deep sea angler takes his pick from marlin, shark, sailfish and tunny. More tranquil fishing is offered at Lake Naivasha. It's also a bird watcher's heaven with more than 360 different species to be seen in their natural environment. A gentle boat trip round the lake finds nature at peace. Here it's quiet, gentle, restful. The water lilies grudgingly move aside. Kilaguni Lodge is probably the finest game lodge in Africa. Situated in the heart of the 8,000 square mile Savo National Park, the lodge overlooks a water hole. It's a rare place where the animals actually come to the guests. For fight fans, here's the heavyweight contest to end them all. Kenya is a country of wonderful scenery. Thompson Falls provides a rare feast for the eye, a spectacular cascade of cool, clear water. At Msimi Springs, there's a chance to see hippos as they really are. Charming great beasts, only too pleased to give a wide grin for the camera. Of course, one of the most famous of all hotels or lodges in Kenya is the treetops in Abadares National Park. It's one of the most unique buildings in the world. Here, guests can observe all wild game virtually from the comfort and security of their rooms. It's a place to get really close to nature without sacrificing one's creature comforts. But even treetops is not baboon proof. It's doubtful if anywhere is. Somehow, they always find a way to get where the pickings are best. So this is Kenya, a wild and gentle land where big game and wildlife abound. Where flora and fauna are at their most beautiful and varied. Where the lion is king of the beasts, but doesn't press the point. It's all here, everything one could wish for. Excitement, adventure, or tranquility. Just hours away from home.